For Expresso, I am JP Sebastian Lambert Wilson. It is an honor. Thank you for your time. Thank you um, for uh, talking to me. You're one of our most iconic villains. Um, I think I don't need to mention who. Immediately, there will be people hissing at their screens, I'm sure, because of some of the portrayals that you've, you've done. But that's only part of your story as an actor. And so what draws you to a character like the Marquis in Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris? And the story overall, what draws you to it? Originally, nothing draws me to the character. I tell you why. I did the film originally. Originally, it's because Tony Fabian, the director, is a friend of mine, and it was uh, he, when he asked me to portray the Marquis, uh, it was it was normal for me to accept the role and to and to be part of the of the story. I was honoured to be to be part of it. Um, but I thought, being French myself and knowing quite a lot about the French aristocracy. Um, I was a little worried that, you know, he was going to be boring and conventional. And it's only when we got on the set and that I worked, started working with Les Leslie Mandeville that I realized that he had his little mission in the film, you know, that he, he has to embody um, something that is part of her dream, her vision, her romantic vision of Paris. And also that he, um, he has to trap her into believing that he is interested uh, romantically when he isn't at all. He, he, he just likes her because she reminds him of something from his childhood. So um, there was more to it than just the, the cliché of the appearance of the French aristocrat. I think also, I to tell you the truth, we were so happy to go back on a set because it was just after the end of uh, the lockdown and, uh, you know, it was, it was just... Uh, Irresistible, in a way, to be to be part of a, a period film with all these fantastic actors, and so um, I, I I was happy to be in it eventually. So uh, the Marquis is a bit of a recluse, and that is until Ada comes to Paris. Uh, is it fair to say that she wakes up something in him? Uh, is uh, what is the dynamic between the two of them? He she just brings something from the past that he recognize, recognizes unconsciously. And he, he has to work hard to try and find out what it is exactly that she brings back. And so I think he, he's unaware. Uh, so when, when, when she says to him, oh, I see, um, I remind you of a cleaner, and he says, yes, because for him it's something great. Yes, she does remind him of a cleaner, and it's a cleaner that he adored. And he's unaware of how cruel that can be to her. Um, that's who he is. Uh, he, he is walled in, in his solitude and his yeah. vision of the world. He is mm -hmm. not, he doesn't despise her socially. I mean, he helps her yes. enter the fashion show. He, there's no distance. He doesn't think that she should be despised because she comes from a working class um, <clears throat> part of the society. No, 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 no. He is a real aristocrat in that sense. You know, he's just a, like, he finds her lovely. She, he, she, mm -hmm. she is associated with nice memories. And so, um, mm -hmm. but he plays, a, he, un, unbeknownst to him, he plays a cruel game with her. Mm. How would you describe the Paris of this time in Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris? So how does it speak to now? Paris has been protected as, as if it were under a dome of glass. Um, that's why the tourists find it as they had imagined it. Uh, but the reality of the town is very, very different. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of a jungle. The, the second you reach Paris, uh, you become someone else. You, you want to fight with everyone, with the cars and, and the scooters and the <laughs> bicycles. So. <clears throat> Paris was like that in the 50s. There were less cars, and there was a, a desire to reconstruct the country. There was an energy uh, that um, has been maybe altered since. Uh, I've always been fascinated by that period. And so for me, it's, as a Parisian, it's lovely to see the Paris that we have left behind, but that you can still find again. It's as if Paris, the city, the walls, the monuments, is the same, it's just the people, <laughs> the people have changed. Because now in the streets, like anywhere else in the world, you only see people walking in the street with their phone, with their cell phones, you know, so it's just like it's, people are not relating the way they are relating in the film. Uh, and I'm not sure that you would find such endearing characters as you do in the film. I think uh, Tony Fabian, the director, was, was perfectly uh, um, clever in, in, in giving this pristine, uh, irresistible vision of, of Paris because 
It is part of the subject that she has a dream. The dress is the dream, but Paris is also the dream. And um, she somehow manages to make the dream come true. So um, portraying Paris as, as a sort of dream, dream city is, is, is part of the, of, of the whole um, subject, in a way. Yes, yes. Um, but uh, speaking of people being on phones for too long, I tell you what, I'm going to uh, say goodbye and thank beautiful movie and delightful it was. Thank you so much for, for your thank time. You, sir, and, uh, thank you, Thank you for this movie. Ciao. What a beautifully insightful interview, man. Well so, done on that, hey? Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Come on, yeah. with it? Um, I mean, we, we, we'll congratulate him too, because the dude wanted to speak for an hour. He was like, that was so short. Really? <laughs> you don't get that happening a lot. Such That's a sweet guy. Bro, Lambert amazing, was... amazing. All right, so I, I think for me, I'll, I'll get your, your views on it later on. I, while I was watching this and some of the, sh uh, the, the behind the scenes stuff, it's the ultimate story of the underdog for me that I love, mm -hmm. that there's always hope, mm -hmm. you know, you can always achieve or attain that goal as long as you hold on to the vision. And, and I think that's what the, the lead character does in Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. I, I'm going to hold on to my tongue. Oh, really? No, no, no. no. I, I, I like this movie, but, okay. but like I said, uh, uh, yeah, we All have right. a show to get to over here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll chat a bit now. later about that. Stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast show. We'll be right back.